Hello and welcome to Inside the Synod. I'm Sebastian Gomes. Today was the third day that the Synod was in session and it was entirely dedicated to the Chircoli Minori or the small language groups. Now yesterday these groups met for the first time but only to elect a moderator and also a relator, someone to synthesize the discussion uh, to present the findings to the general congregation on Friday. But today the real work started, working through that first part of the Instrumentum Laboris uh, based on what has been said in the Synod uh, the first days previous to now. And Archbishop Charles Chaput of the, Ar the Archbishop of Philadelphia came to the press briefing today to talk about this next part of the discussion. Uh, this morning we began the hard work of our uh, small circles. Uh, the group that I belong to is the fourth English-speaking group. There's four of us. And uh, you know, just the, the group of people is very interesting. They're from Pakistan, Canada, England, France, India, Bangladesh, uh, Kenya, Philippines, Ghana, Zambia, Indonesia, Australia, Belgium, and Uganda, and uh, several people from the United States, all talking together about the instrum, instrum laboris and uh, our responsibilities to respond to it realistically. Now the Vatican has been working hard to articulate how the discussion is moving forward based on the Instrumentum Laboris, uh, but there are some challenges. Uh, some bishops are saying uh, that the Instrumentum Laboris, which is based on last year's synod and also the entire consultation that took place around uh, the church this past year, uh, really reflects a Eurocentric sociological and cultural perspective and so it may not be as reflective of the entire universal church as some might like uh, and as I say this presents a challenge language is a key issue and Archbishop Shapu spoke about that at the press conference as well there is that general question or issue of um, is the is the presentation of facts you know the statement of the of the the way family life is experienced fully accurate and comprehensive in the document because it, in some senses, you know, when talking about the problems, the problems are basically problems of Western Europe and, and the Northern Hemisphere. And uh, so we, you know, we talked about that. One of the issues we're dealing with is the official documents are really, are in Italian, and the translations are more or less accurate, not always. And so we have the, the additional problem of trying to deal with very serious issues and languages we don't clearly understand. And as we move on into the process, there's a bit of worry in our group that when the final document is pronounced in Italian and we're asked to vote, we may not be very clear on what we're voting for. Cindy Wooden is the Rome Bureau Chief for Catholic News Service. She's covering uh, this particular synod of bishops. And I had a chance to speak to her earlier about this challenge of language and what it means for the discussions as we move forward. Let's take a look. At the Synod so far, we've seen some questions being raised uh, about the kind of language that's being used. And I'll give you an example. Uh, the language in the Instrumentum Laboris, which is the working document that the, that the Synod Fathers are working with. Um, the relatio, the, the opening relatio of Cardinal Erdo uh, that he gave the first day of the Synod. And people are look, reading those now and saying, okay, maybe they reflect a kind of Eurocentric way of thinking about the pastoral challenges to family. Do you think that that's true? Do you think that there is that, that Eurocentric bias in the, bias in the text and uh, that, that there's something missing, that, that that's something that the Synod Fathers are picking up? The Relatio, the working document that the Synod is dealing with, was approved by the Extraordinary Synod last year. I'm not sure it would have been approved and presented as the working document for this Synod if that Western-centric bias was really present. I mean, obviously, just because we're in Europe and kind of the Western media have the money to travel to get here, and we're reporting on things of interest to our readers, whether we're religious, Catholic, or secular media, I think the media coverage of the Synod is one thing. What the Synod documents say is something else. And I think that those two can easily be confused. 
What you just saw was an excerpt from a longer interview that I did with Cindy about the Synod and also the Pope's recent trip to the United States of America. You can catch it in its entirety on tomorrow's episode of Inside the Synod. Now, one of the methodological changes at this Synod is how the final text is being drafted. The Pope has appointed 10 Synod Fathers to a commission that is responsible for drafting this text. They will then uh, present it on the floor at the end of the three-week synod. The synod fathers will vote on it, and if approved, it will be given to the Pope. And the Pope, of course, can do with it as he chooses. Now, one of the members of that commission is Father Adolfo Nicolas. He's the Superior General of the Society of Jesus, or the Jesuits. And I had a chance to speak with him today about this important responsibility. The responsibility is uh, more or less to be aware of the things that have to be present in the document. You know? And when they are not present to, to raise the issue, I don't see myself as a, the main redactor and because there are others who can do it much better. You know? uh, but I, in terms of help, at least be aware of a few reference points they should be present. We had a chance, of course, to speak to other Synod Fathers and delegates today about their interventions and how the discussion is developing. Here are a few of those interviews now. So the message I bring to the Synod is, uh, is that our Christian communities should be attentive to accompany couples who are in difficult situations. And the difficult situations are of different kinds. But I think particularly of couples who are in interreligious marriages and who sometimes do not find the support that they need from their Christian community and who gradually, because of that, uh, drift away from the church. So it will be good that the families that are already living happily as uh, Christian couples support the, the families who find themselves in interreligious marriage situations, especially in Islamic uh, uh, majority countries where Catholics are a minority. The message I, my husband and I would like to give is interfaith, intercommunity marriages are very workable. They cause a lot of vibrancy and harmony. And I think those are the ingredients that the world needs today very much. I was um, conveying to the Synod of Fathers uh, the voice of the families of Ukraine that we bishops, we are not an owners of the revealed divine truth about family and marriage. We are only servant. So our duty today is not to change the doctrine of the church on marriage and sec uh, human sexuality, but to explain better in the way that perhaps today's young man or, or young girl can understand, believe and accept that gospel of family. Uh, my first impressions are, as uh, was true a few years ago in the Synod, uh, it is the whole world that's here. And uh, multiple points of view arise, particularly in something as basic and yet as uh, rich and at times troublesome as the family. So I've been uh, favorably impressed by the variety, but it's also the, uh, the frustration because so many people come from so many different points of view. The family is the nucleus of society and the domestic church. It is my belief that uh, the battle for the survival of the world and of the church will be fought, either won or lost in our families. I would love to see the family become a model for the church. We so often talk about the responsibility and the mission of the wider church to the family, but the longer I live, the more I am inspired by the reality of family life. And they manage to find a way, and I think that the church needs to understand that the family has a, a deep prayerful mission to the wider church and that the church has got to listen carefully to the heartbeat of the faithful family. Now, as I mentioned, language is becoming a central theme of this synod. And specifically, is it possible for the church to change its language in order to meet people where they are? Now, an interesting question about what this might look like 
came up at the press briefing today. The journalist asked, how is it possible to on the one hand remain faithful to the teachings of the church and on the other hand be able to accompany people, to meet them where they are in all of their difficulties? And Archbishop Shapu of Philadelphia attempted to answer that question in this way. I don't know. I think it's part of our, <laughs> part of our process. And also it's important to understand the audience to whom we are addressing our work. Is it the Holy Father personally or is it the church in general? And then, you know, language that might be offensive in Western Europe and Northern, uh, North America uh, might be a language that's necessary for clarity in places like Africa and Asia. And so I think this is an international meeting of the, of the Catholic Church, all of us, and it's important for the work of the Synod not to be narrowly uh, focused on the concerns that are primarily the concerns of my country, for example. I think we need to deal with those concerns but that's not the only thing. Uh, and I think we are, uh, you know, we, the first question we ask ourselves, who's our audience? Because it's important to say things in a way that our audience can understand things. But our audience is huge and diverse, and it's important for us to respond to that diversity. Archbishop Paul-André de Rocher of Gatineau is one of the Canadian delegates at this synod, and yesterday he gave his intervention, which was on uh, women denouncing violence against women, and also raising questions about where women can take on greater leadership roles in the church. Now this sparked a very interesting conversation in the press. So earlier today, I sat down with him to talk about his intervention and other important questions at this Synod of Bishops. You can catch that interview in its entirety on Saturday, October 10th on Inside the Synod. And that's all for today, but please stay tuned tomorrow for another episode of Inside the Synod. For Salt and Light Television, I'm Sebastian Gomes in Rome.